Are you out of your mind? Give her another one. What a way to go. I really thought we had had it. What's gotten into you? I warned you at home. I don't want to go there. Well, you have to. You can take me there, but I won't stay. You could have killed us all. That's what I tried to do. The kid's lost her marbles. Talking wild like that. I'm certainly glad, Paul, that we're getting rid of her. Shut up! That's no way to talk to your mother. Stepmother. My mother's dead. Oh, you're back on that track. And I'll never get off. I don't approve of your smoking, but I guess one more won't hurt you now. Let her have a whole pack if it'll help calm her nerves. I'll handle this, dear. Now look, Nancy, we've discussed this back and forth. Then you ought to know how I feel. Then why can't you see it my way? I have a right to remarry. Oh, you're on that lonesome kick again. At least you could have waited. Six weeks. And then you married her. Well, the company shifted me to another city. I had to make a decision. I know. They twisted your arm around her. That'll do. You're selfish. Maybe your mother spoiled you. All you think of is yourself. Me? You're a fine one to talk. You sell the house, you yank me out of school, you break up my whole social life. You mean those moonlight beach parties and those rock and roll sessions? I lose all my friends. Especially Glenn, and just when we were getting close. Real close. I can just imagine. You break it up and now you want to get rid of me. Did you expect us to take you along on our honeymoon? Oh, don't give me that blushing bride routine. You put a ring through Dad's nose and... That'll do. Well, at least I told you. And it makes no sense. Now we're going. And you'd better keep your hands off the wheel. Well, at least the storm must let up a bit. hours ago. I'm sorry, Mrs. Thorndike. I allowed all day for the 300 miles. But this storm and coming through the mountain pass, we nearly skidded off the road. It was really close. Well, I'm glad you made it. I'm sorry I can't offer you something to eat. That's all right. We'll get a bite on the way back. Yes, you should be on your way, both of you. You've done enough for me. I'm Nancy Perkins, Mrs. Thorndike. Please forgive us all. Forget it, Nancy. Poor girl, you look half frozen. I'll be all right. Then we'd better conclude the formalities. Mrs. Perkins. Uh, the new Mrs. Perkins. I lost my wife recently. Six weeks ago. In fact, that's why we registered Nancy at Sherwood. Well, I'm sure you made the right choice. I think you'll be very happy here, Nancy. I like the cheery atmosphere. At first, she seemed a little worried. That's natural. Separate anyone from familiar surroundings. The warmth and security of home. You do understand. Of course. But I'm sure any strangeness you feel will pass. She was also worried about the discipline. Oh, now, Nancy. This is not a corrective institution. Sherwood is a private preparatory school with a very high rating. All our girls come from fine backgrounds. But there is work. Our courses are not easy. But there is also fun. You'll find out. Lots of fun. Well, I'm I'm glad that's settled. You know your way back? It'll be a breeze. You're driving all the way home tonight? They'll probably stop at a motel. Well, goodbye, Nancy, and be sure to write. Every week. Yeah, say goodbye to... 
Goodbye, Doris. Take good care of Daddy. Goodbye, Nancy. Well, I leave my little girl in your charge. Goodbye, Mrs. Thorndike. Goodbye. Goodbye, Nancy. Come along, dear. I'll help you with your luggage, Nancy. I'll show you to your room. It's right up here. You sleep in here tonight. You'd better go to bed at once. Actually, it's too late now, but in the morning I'll introduce you to the girls in your dormitory. Five very sweet girls. Well, good night. Good night. got sense enough not to fight. Shocking pink, the first blush of spring. <laughs> and look at the neckline on this blouse. Oh, this form of the most. Colors. The music and moonlight. My dream boy. <laughs> I hope you kids are having a ball. Signal when you're through, I'd like to sack in. Where'd you hide the cigarettes? There they are. Help yourselves. I'm terribly sorry I didn't bring a carton. Um, maybe we should tell this, uh, prize package that it's against the rules to speak until you get permission. Or we might have to put you through our course in etiquette. Uh, for instance, do you take off your gloves to eat and drink? And when your date brings you home, do you give him the key to your front door? Hey, look at this! <sighs> Didn't anyone ever tell you this was bad for your tea? Oh, oh chocolate. Oh, kids, look at this! My oh, little oh, girl's got a dream wow. boy. With wavy hair oh. and muscles in yeah, the middle. Yeah, let <laughs> Hey, beat it, you guys. Old horse face is on the warpath. So, you're the new girl, Nancy Perkins. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm Miss Rivers, and I'm the house mother. I look after this dormitory, and I teach art. Also, I expect to get eight hours uninterrupted sleep. Yes, ma'am. For a new arrival, you certainly can kick up a storm. I'd never give you an A for tidiness. Do you have to make so much noise unpacking? Don't you know everyone's asleep? I'm sorry, Miss Rivers. I was looking for something. A hand mirror, a present from my dad. I, I thought at first that I'd left it home, but then I found it. Well, you put all these things back neatly. And remember, at Sherwood, we teach our young girls to be neat and quiet and go to bed. I hope you slept well, Nancy. Sometimes a strange bed in a strange place. Oh, no. It was just like home. Cozy and quiet. Good. Good morning, girls. Good morning, Good morning Mrs. Mrs. Thorndike. Sit down, girls. I'd like you to meet Nancy Perkins, your new roommate. Uh, this is Myra, Hi. Terry, Nola, Linda, Hello. and Anne. How Hello. do you do? Hello. These must be the five sweet girls you told me about. Exactly. You see, we like to put a newcomer in with girls who've been here for a while for guidance. 
They'll show you where your classes are and help you get used to our ways here at Sherwood. I'm sure they will. Well, I hope you all get along. And from now on, good luck. Thank you. Come on, girl. Let's go. Excuse us, Nancy. Nancy, I want to talk to you. You passed your first test with flying colors. You didn't snitch. There's one thing we can't stand around here. It's a snitch. I'm glad I made the grade, but don't give me an A for conduct. I like to handle things in my own way. Don't be a meathead. I'm just taking an interest in you, because you've got spirit. Just remember, there's no such thing as a lone wolf at Sherwood. We can make life awfully miserable for oddballs. I suppose. First of all, when it comes to classes, I'm the teacher's assistant in chemistry. Secondly, Nola, the girl whose hair you tore out by the roots, she's an English assistant. Get it? I get it. And then if you want to have some fun here and be let in on things, you've just got to be one of us. How do you get to be one of us? You'll do what I say. You'll have to join our secret organization, Birds of Paradise. So long as I sponsor you, you're as good as in. I never won any medals for obedience. Come on, we'll be late for class. I'm not hungry anymore. Hi, Myra. Oh, hi, Eddie. Hey, who's the new talent? Nancy, this is Eddie. Is she a member? After the next initiation. I'd give her a preferred position. I dig her. Would you two mind letting me in on the double talk? Ever hear of a census? Yeah. If they ever took one at Sherwood, Eddie would be penciled in as the whole male population. And Eddie's the exclusive property of Birds of Paradise. We take turns dating him. What a catch. That's all there is except on holidays. We divide him up like a jug of water on a lifeboat. One swallow to each girl. Oh, now I get it. King Farouk. With a lawn mower. <laughs> Myra, move her way up on the list. I'll give you a better idea, Myra. Scratch my name off. Fall off that cloud. I've got a real boyfriend. Wow. What a frosty chick. Well, that just leaves more water in the jug for the rest of us. Any way you pour it, I'd say you've got more jug than water. That's for nothing. What did I do? It's what you were willing to do. I heard you every word. Listen, Lunkhead, you're not the dream boy you think. If there was more supply around here, there'd be less demand. All right, all right. And don't forget you're engaged to me. Yeah, but it's a secret. Not from us. You know it, and I know it. Remember that. Sure, sure, baby. I have to share you, but I don't want you to be so enthusiastic about it. Okay, okay. Now give the girl you love a kiss. Here? Here. In the morning? Does true love look at the clock? Okay. And don't forget, cut your date short tonight. Say your head hurts. You've been thinking. And meet me later on at the same place. What experiment shall I get ready for today's class? Two simple experiments, combination. The joining of simple solutions to form a more complex compound, and decomposition, breaking down the compound. You remember, copper wires to form a copper oxide, and then we'll decompose hydrogen peroxide to form water. Yes, I got my thesis back again. I'm sorry, Miss Branding. Save your sympathy and try to learn something from this. We live in a world ruled by men for men. They won't even consider my thesis. They mock me, my work. But they're convinced that they're on the right track. And before they're proven wrong, and I can do that, they'll destroy the world through reckless experiments. But you yourself, you experiment all the time. Of course I do, constantly. I'm not against progress. But they search for power in the wrong place. If they continue, do you realize what the people of the future will be, what they'll look like? Monsters. Grotesque, misshapen, frightening fiends. Isotopes and fallout in our lungs and our glands. Distorting natural shape and proportion. 
No one can calculate the hazards of radiation. Reckless fools. They search in the wrong place. When I can demonstrate that there's a power strong enough to destroy the world buried within each of us, if only we could unleash it. But how? I can release a destructive power in a human being that would make the split atom seem like a blessing. And after I've done that, after I've demonstrated clearly that there's more terrible power in us than man can create, scientists will give up their destructive experiments. They'll stop testing nuclear bombs. Nations will stop looking for new artificial weapons because the natural ones, we, the human race, will be too terrible to arouse. War will no longer be a calculated risk because it can only end in total destruction. Oh, it sounds big, Miss Branding. Important. Oh, if I could help. No, you won't do, Myra. For my experiment, I must find a special kind of girl with special potentials. No, you're not what I need. I must find someone with the natural fire, explosiveness, close to the surface. A disturbed girl, perhaps, but with a will of her own. Someone... Wait till you meet our new girl, Nancy Perkins. She's an A-bomb all by herself. In fact, each of you, in your own chemical makeup, contains elements which, if isolated and let loose, could blow up the entire school. <laughs> but when these dangerous elements are combined, we have a bouquet of very pretty girls. <laughs> Myra, will you conduct the next experiment? I'll need two girls, Nola and Nancy. Both of you, please come up. So you're the new girl, Nancy. Yes, Miss Brandy. Well, you're the guinea pig. You're on your own. Here are two colorless liquids. One is water, the other alcohol. We will see which one evaporates first. Uh, Nola, please extend your right hand, palm down. Go ahead, Nancy. That's cool. It feels real cool. All right, Nola, you do the same thing to Nancy. Burn me! Here, 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 Nancy! Easy, Nancy. You must control yourself. A mistake's been made. On purpose. You better let me treat this for you. Myra, will you look after the class? Yes, Miss Branding. I think Nancy needs special treatment. I'm sorry, Nancy, but accidents will happen. I still say it was no accident. You feel strongly about being hurt. I never forget a hurt, and I never forget the person who hurts me. It's better? No. It still hurts. Maybe it won't get better. Perhaps it can't get better until you do something about it. Like what? Like what you intimated? Like getting even? Maybe. You needn't be ashamed or afraid of that impulse. For some people, special people, no injury gets better until the score's been evened. I certainly feel that way. So did our ancestors. You remember the Bible? An eye for an eye? Then it's all right to feel the way I do? Yes, under certain conditions. I feel that way about my father for remarrying so soon. I hate my stepmother. I even hate the school because oh, all... I understand, dear. Bruised emotions don't heal easily. Sometimes never. All quite normal. As I said, under certain conditions. What conditions? I'll tell you sometime when we get to know each other better. Soon? Perhaps. And when you're prepared to do something about it. It would be silly for you to strike out blindly, don't you think? Yes. Whatever you do should be done under guidance. But whose? I'll tell you that, too. Soon? Perhaps soon. still hurts. Well, now I'll really take the pain away. 
But I'll need your cooperation. What do you want me to do? First, I want you to answer a question. All right. Nancy, do you trust me? I think so. I hardly trust anyone except... Well, Glenn, that's my boyfriend, and... Of course, I did trust my mother. But you? I think so. I'm glad. Because if you didn't, I couldn't help you at all. And because you do, I naturally trust you. In other words, what happens in this room must not go beyond this room. You can depend on me. What do you want me to do? I'll tell you. Nancy, have you ever been hypnotized? No, not really. Oh, some goon tried it on me once in a parlor game at a party. And I, I made believe that I was under his influence. And then he told me to kiss him hard, but I slapped him hard instead. Well, this is not a parlor game, nor is it make believe. And take my word for it, Nancy. This will help you in many, many ways. You see this amulet? I picked it up in an antique shop. It was sold to the dealer by a woman whose ancestors had emigrated from the Carpathian Mountains. She claimed that it had been in her family for seven generations. She must have made up the story to get a bigger price. No, she didn't, Nancy. She told the truth. I made a trip to that region to verify this amulet and the legend connected with it. It's a strange metal with a cat's eye for a centerpiece. It can heal and it can destroy. Also, it can release frightening powers. Look at it, Nancy. Look at it. Now go to sleep. Your eyes are getting drowsy. You're getting more and more sleepy. But you can still hear my voice. You can hear me and you will obey me. You're in a deep sleep, and your hand no longer feels the pain. Touch it. Pinch it. Do as I tell you. I want you to prove it to yourself. It's all gone. And that's what I promised you. And I helped take the pain away. And you won't forget that. No, Miss Brandy. When I count to five, you'll wake up refreshed. The pain entirely gone. But you'll remember that it's important to obey me. Always. One. Two. Three. Four, five. Wake up. How do you feel, Nancy? Fine. I feel fine. It's gone. Now you can go to your next class. Thank you. And remember, not a word of this. You can trust me, Miss Branding. Thank you again. <laughs> Now remember you guys, this is no panty raid. We know how to socialize. Well, we gotta behave. Like little gentlemen. Sure, just like you said. Good, clean fun. We'll just be a welcome surprise. Yeah, well, I hope so, because I still don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Come on, Eddie. Make the move. 
And don't forget, Tab, I get dibs on the blonde. Which blonde? Any blonde. Only if there's a red hat for me. Hold this, will you, Joe? Come on. My buddies, Joe and Tab. Hi. Uh, they fell in on me. They're from Lindbrook High, and I was telling them... Who invited the... you? We heard the rock and roll. Figured I was open house. Well, it's out of bounds except for girls. You'll get us all in trouble. No, you can't crash this party. We already did. So you might as well be sociable. Besides, it'll be more fun. Terry, did you invite... I just happened to mention to Eddie that we were going to hold an initiation party. What's the difference? Let's have a blast. Then we'll go quietly out the window. Well, all right. But I'm going to hold you responsible. Hey, okay, it's all in fun. Come on, I brought some swinging records. How about a replacement for that pillow? No, thanks. Oh, the sociable type. I choose my own partners. Okay, but wait till you ask me to dance. Hey, Ted. How about singing Puppy Love for the girls? Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, it was Friday night and it sure was hot. I had my daddy's car with a convertible top. We drove by the light of the moon above. And my baby said, oh yeah, let's make some puppy love. She looked at me and smiled so sweet That I felt like jumping right out of my seat I knew what she was thinking of Cause her eyes said, come on, let's make some puppy love Well then she gave me that crazy look And before I knew it I was really shook So I drove like mad and I didn't stop Cause I knew that if I did I might blow my top so I drove her home, cause it was late And asked her for another date She said, that's real cool, my turtle dove We'll take another ride and make some puppy love And before I knew it, I was really shook So I drove like mad and I didn't stop Cause I knew that if I did, I might blow my top So I drove her home, cause it was late And asked her for another date She said, that's real cool, my turtle dove We'll take another ride and make some puppy love Making puppy love Nancy. 
see? <sighs> Nothing. I just feel a little dizzy, that's all. It's the excitement of the party. Sit this dance out and relax. Dad, I'd like to dance the next dance with you. Okay. Look, baby, you're with me. Knock it off, Joe. We dance, so what? Oh, hey, Dad! Stop, stop it! Don't stop, 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 stop it! Cut it off, Bella! Come on, let me in. Hurry up! Hurry up! Open the door and let me in. Okay, let her What's in. What's going on in there? What's going on in here? Why is this door locked? I thought I heard men's voices. Oh, no, Miss Rivers. I was just doing imitations. And this place looks as though you'd had a barroom brawl. Oh, we've just been having a little pillow fight. And what were the pillows stuffed with? Well, the hijinks are over for tonight. Rules are rules. And it's after 10 o'clock. Oh, oh, just oh, a little longer. Miss Rivers. Long a few minutes. Well, 15 minutes. And then all lights out. And Nola, you better get supplies for tomorrow's class now. I know you, sleepyhead. You'll never be up on time. Oh, I'm always the patsy. Hmm. Wait till I get my hands on your Eddie. Okay, kids, start straightening up. You any better, Nancy? I'm just sleepy, that's all. I think I'll sack in. Do that. You cut out now. We'll clean up. Good night. Here, Nola. Take one for the road. <laughs> 86 proof ginger ale. All right, the rest of you stay here and help me clean up. Nobody goes to sleep until this room is ship shape. The birds of paradise are noisy, but neat. Who's there? Thorndike, I'd like to talk to all the girls who attended the initiation last night. Sergeant, you certainly don't suspect one of them. Routine. But you know how teenagers are. Sometimes they get carried away, lose their heads. Well, I suppose you must. If you don't mind, I'll have them brought down. Miss Branding, will you please go to dormitories D and E, wake up the girls and tell them to come down to my office? Yes, Mrs. Thorndike. I think we could save a little time if you answered a few questions now. Of course. What are you keeping that basement? 
school supplies, and tools. Who goes down there? Mostly William, the janitor. Occasionally a student. Oh, the janitor's been with us over 15 years. Does he keep the basement locked up? No, it's usually open. Just the supply room is kept locked. We'd like to have a talk with the janitor. Well, I'll get him right away. Wake up, everybody. Come on, wake up, girls. Wake up. There's been a terrible accident. Hurry, put on your robes. And meet me outside in Mrs. Thorndyke's office. The police want to question you. Police? What kind of an accident? When they talk to you, just tell them the truth. Now hurry. You mustn't keep them Nancy. waiting. Come on, Nancy. now. Nancy. Wake up. Wake up. Nancy. Can you imagine our sleeping through all this? You go ahead. I'll get Nancy up. Wake up, Nancy. Wake up. Come on, Nancy, wake up. You've had a long sleep. I know. I feel, I feel as though I'd been drugged. But it did you a world of good. How pretty you are after the night. Look. I must have dreamed something weird, Miss Branding. Perhaps you can explain it. I dreamed Forget I... Forget it now. You can tell me about it later, when we're alone. But for anyone else, forget it. The night belongs to you. It's your private domain. No one shall intrude. As far as the outside world's concerned, forget it. You understand? I understand, Miss Branding, and I'll forget it. Nancy, I have something to tell you. The janitor found Nola early this morning in the supply room. She was dead. Remember now, you had nothing to do with it. You understand? I understand. The police are here and will question all of you in Mrs. Thorndyke's office about the initiation. Would you sign this, Lieutenant? Yeah. I read their report, Doc. I get the frame, but there's no clear picture. What do you make of it? Only what I saw. Well, what? Two tiny punctures on the external jugular vein right side. Any blood? No, that's the strange part. No evidence of bleeding. And what is even stranger, not much blood left inside. Well, now come off it, Doc. I've never known you to over-dramatize. I'm only reporting what showed on a surface diagnosis. Face and hands ghastly pale, as if the blood had been drained completely. Oh, I'm sure the PM will verify that. I'd say so. That's just how the body looked, Lieutenant. Shame a beautiful young girl like that. Mind if I say something? Go ahead. What's in your mind? Well, this type of murder is part of a pattern. You know anything about this pattern? I believe so. At med school, I shared a room with an exchange student from a small town on the Carpathian Mountains. He used to tell us stories, legends, about vampires, Draculas. He told them as though he believed them, as though he'd seen the monsters with his own eyes. He explained it as an old world sickness that drives the killer on and on. He described it so vividly, uh, the pictures never left me. And when I saw that young girl, chalk white, the last drop of blood drained from her, it came back to me killer, the sickness, the victims, just as he described it to me. As though it were true. And Dracula. Oh, come off it, Mike. You must be kidding. Don't let anyone hear you talk like that or you'll end up in a straitjacket. Okay, make fun of it if you like. But I believe it. One crack like that out of you to the reporters, and we'll have mass hysteria. Well, I'm in charge here. We're not reviving the age of witches and grave robbers. I'm sorry, Mike, but we've all got to watch ourselves very carefully. One wrong word could have the effect of dropping an A-bomb on Sherwood. As it is, the teenage students are panicked. Look, I understand your position, but... Now, Mike, 
A good coroner's not only got to be a good physician and surgeon, he's got to understand the legal principles of evidence and proof in court. That's why we can't go around shooting our mouth off making loose assertions. What you just said couldn't be proved. For the present, we'll call this youthful zeal on your part. But from here on in, you just follow instructions. Shocking. I agree, Mr. Mather, but I'm doing all I can to keep the girls calm. In 36 years, it's the first black mark against the Sherwood School. It's awful. I think the school should be allowed the same constitutional rights as an individual. Let's say that Sherwood School is innocent until proven guilty of negligence. I'm thinking of the reaction of the board. First thing they'll do is to cut down on the state grant of funds for your school. They're businessmen before they're educators. They won't support a hotbed of scandal and terror. They may even close Sherwood altogether. Well, how would that help? How would that solve anything? I don't know, but authorities act that way. What about the girl's parents? They're circus performers in Europe on a tour. A lawyer in Chicago handled her tuition and checked her school reports. They've been notified. Perhaps the police will find the murderer before they get here. In the meantime, we must do everything possible to keep all the other parents at bay. You speak of parents as if they were enemies. It's the only way to think of them. Why do they send their teenage daughters to a boarding school away from home? Would you? You'd be surprised how vicious those parents can get. When they leave their daughters in a private school, they also leave all their responsibilities. For what they pay, little or much, they expect you to be mother, father, policeman, minister, teacher, guardian, confidant, and friend. Mrs. Thorndike, I know your record. I know your qualifications. I know how hard you've worked to maintain high standards at Sherwood. Believe me, I haven't changed in my opinion of you or the school. It's just the outside world that concerns me. Let's keep a strong hand on the situation to let me know of any developments. I'll try to keep the board from tearing you apart. Girls, before we take up today's first experiment, I've been asked by Mrs. Thorndike to say a few words to you. I know we're all dreadfully upset by the tragedy that took place. The death of a teenage girl is a terrible thing under any circumstances. The unfortunate way it happened here is shocking, shattering. But we must try to put it out of our minds. We don't help by brooding or neglecting our studies. Let's remember that the proper authorities are handling this case. That's their job. Our job is to concentrate on our studies. The living have an obligation to go on living. Now, for our experiment this morning, we'll observe the results when a substance is changed from one physical state to another. Myra, will you set up the proper apparatus? Come in. Here are the corrected test papers, Miss Branding. I see you're doing more work on your thesis. Yes, I'm revising it. Important revisions. Then you found some new material? Yes. Science constantly moves forward. Every hour brings new discoveries. Your own? My own. Otherwise, what I have to give to the world would have no validity. If my thesis is to make the correct impact on mankind, it must be based on what I see with my own eyes. And what you do with your own hands. Exactly. I see. Myra, look at me. I said look at me. Myra, I've spent many extra hours training you for a scientific career. In those hours, we've worked closely together. I've confided in you about my thesis, what it means to me, what it can mean to the world. Yes, Miss Branding. That confidence must never be violated. Never. Looks like we've run into a wall. That's about it, Lieutenant. Every lead we had blew up. Well, we've questioned a few prowlers and vagrants. One screwball even wanted to sign a confession. When we checked, he had an airtight alibi. I've still got a wino in the tank, but I don't no, think... No, I checked your report on him. There's nothing there. Better drop it. 
Every time we corral a new suspect, it leaks out to the press. The mess gets stirred up, but we give them no results. All they want is results. Well, has Doc Lawson got any ideas? You know how cautious he is. Won't make a statement until it can stand up in court. Says it could even be an animal. Shall I close it out? How long have we been on it? Two weeks? Yeah, a few days. No, better just mark time on it. Something's got to show up. All right, kids, kids, listen. Here are the rules for our Halloween scavenger hunt. Early today, I buried six objects in the old cemetery. In the cemetery? Yes, we have to prove our bravery, don't we? Anyway, the first one to bring back three of those objects wins this crazy compact, complete with rhinestones and trick mirror, donated by Terry. Hey, yeah, but where do we look? We can't dig up the whole cemetery, and by night yet. No, I'm going to give you a clue. Now, you find the first object, where the moon shines most bright, you will find an object white. I know where to look. Well, then I'll follow you. You can pass the shovels now. When I say go, you light out fast. Now, say 20 now. Your time limit is one hour. Everybody be back here by 9.20. Go! Baby, why here? I like this atmosphere. Terry, will you level with me? Why here? Silly, I told you I'm on a scavenger hunt. Well, what do you have to bring back, a body? No, we just have to dig up some objects. Well, count me out. Will you stop shivering? The kids often date here. Look, Tab and I thought we were going to go to a Halloween party, but a scavenger hunt in the cemetery... No, I've had it. I'm cutting out. What did you do to your... Why, Nancy, what's come over you? a call fish from the party. Still a social type. Come here, honey, I'm not gonna hurt you. You're pretty strong. Okay, I didn't say anything. I'm leaving right now. Never come across anyone quite like you. Murders all alike. Must be the work of the same killer. 
What do you make of it, Doc? I'll go along with you this far. The symptoms are identical. Two incisions of the jugular vein. Well, is the killer human or animal? Well, I can't commit myself yet. You shut me up fast the first time, but I tell you, this second killing fits in with what I was trying to tell you. Look, according to you, we ought to start a witch hunt. Search for a Dracula. Search only in the moonlight. Protect all possible victims with garlic leaves. Or maybe dig up a couple of rows of corpses and drive wooden stakes through their hearts so they'll stay buried. Isn't that what the legend prescribes? You can't laugh away murder. I'm not trying to. I don't intend to. But the way it happened, where it happened. Look, let's go about this in a logical, routine manner. Now, what was the motive? Well, it's not robbery. No evidence of assault. And it doesn't seem like vengeance. These teenagers had no enemies. Well, none that we know of, that is. Well, then it's definitely the work of a paranoid. Somebody with a compulsion neurosis to kill. In my book, that means another attempt will be made. A psychopathic killer feels superhuman. He thinks of himself as above... Uh... Why himself? There was certainly no clues pointing to the sex of the killer. That's right. Maybe within the school itself. We better re-question every girl on that scavenger hunt. If necessary, every girl in the school. The lieutenant will see you now, Nancy. Go ahead, dear. Come in. Sit down, Nancy. Now, we know you want to tell us the truth. This lie detector will help us to evaluate your answers. The polygraph pens don't lie. Now, Nancy, to set your mind at ease, let me explain how the polygraph works. These wires carry an impulse to the machine which registers through the pens on this graph paper. The pens move according to the impulses they receive from your body. That way, we obtain a picture as to whether your statements are true or false. Start the machine, will you? For example, Nancy, what's your full name? Nancy Perkins. The pen registered a normal impulse. That indicates you told the truth. Now, I want you to tell me a lie. What's your full name? Mm. Eleanor Banks. There. See the difference in the sweep of the pens? That indicates you didn't tell the truth. That's all there is to it. Now, let's get down to business. How old are you, Nancy? Eighteen. How long have you been attending the Sherwood School? Oh, about six weeks. Do you like the school? Yes. Now, tell us in your own words, as best you can, exactly what you did on Halloween night. Well, we were told to look for six objects in the old cemetery, and each of us was given a small spade to dig with. Did you find anything? Not at first, I... Well, go ahead. Tell us how you went about the scavenger hunt. I was trying to find the first object. Yes. And then I saw Terry lying on the ground, and next to her was Tab. Did you see anyone strike either of them? No, sir. Did you touch either of them? No, no, sir. What happened after you saw both bodies? Well, the other girls came running, and they saw the bodies, too, and we just stood there. All of us just stood there. We were too frightened to move. Thank you, Nancy. That'll be all. The polygraph indicates you told the truth. May I take the girls back to school now, Lieutenant? Yes, and thank you very much. That's an interesting necklace, especially the pendant. An antique, I suppose. It's definitely an antique. I'm not the type for costume jewelry. It's a keepsake, of no value at all except to me. 
I can see you treasured very highly by the strong chain you wear it on. Do you also want to question the teachers? Yes, but we'll let you know when. Goodbye, and thanks again. It's almost frightening. It takes possession of me. I must do something awful, but when I try to remember, all I can see is you. I've got to know, Miss Branding. You will. And when you know the whole truth, when you realize the part that you've played in saving mankind from his own destruction, you'll be proud. But in the meantime, what I do, what you make me do, I feel it's wrong. Wrong? Who's the judge of that? There's as much merit to one side as to the other. The final result will justify everything. Go back to class. Empty your mind of doubts or misgivings. Remember, the deed and the responsibility are mine. Your responsibility. Like master and slave? Like brain and arm. Put it out of your mind. Go on, Nancy. Go back to class. I came as soon as I got your message. Thank you, Miss Branding. Oh, I need your help desperately. And I know I can trust you. I'm also trying to control my nerves. But it is extremely difficult. You see, you might say that Sherwood School is under bombardment. Everything I've worked for, built up with love and patience, being destroyed because, because of these dreadful tragedies. A dozen students have been pulled out of school by parents and guardians in the last two days. And the state supervisor threatens to close Sherwood. I know how you feel, Mrs. Thorndyke. Please call on me. Anything I can do, anything. Thank you, Miss Branding. Now, I want you to take over some of my administrative duties, which will leave me free to talk to parents, to reporters, to keep down hysteria until the police catch this fiend, this monstrous killer. Of course, of course. As long as I have a chance, I must keep on fighting to save the school. I'll help in any way I can. Come in. I came as soon as I got your note, Miss Branding. Mrs. Thorndyke wants me to take over some of her administrative duties, so I won't have time for class. I want you to substitute for me tomorrow. Just review what we've studied so far and correct all the papers. Yes, Miss Branding. Are you experimenting on your own again? Yes, I had to check some details. When you transform power from one substance to another, from a lower sphere to a higher sphere, you have to be sure. Good night, dear. I know you'll make a good substitute. But I'll never be the teacher you are, Miss Branding. Good night. Good night. Nancy. Oh, Glenn. I'm sorry if I frightened you, baby, but I've been waiting here for hours. What are you doing here? Well, I, I had to see you. 
I borrowed Dad's car and I cut two classes and made the 300 miles in less than six hours. Aren't you glad to see me? Nancy, are you all right? All the papers are full of scare headlines about Sherwood School and with this fiend running loose, I was nearly out of my mind worrying about you. I just had to see you. I'm all right, Glenn. I'm perfectly all right. Well, how would I know that? One letter from you, the, the first week, and then after that you stopped writing. Nobody crams that much. Nancy, is there anything wrong? No, of course not. I mean between us. No, Glenn. Let's go someplace where we can, where we can talk, Nancy. I tried to see you earlier, but I, I couldn't get by a Miss Branding. She's a real creep. She said no visit is allowed. I asked her, what are you running here, a dungeon? And she practically tossed me out. Because of what happened, they're very strict, that's all. Where can we go, Nancy? I don't know, Glenn. I don't know any place that's safe. Well, let's just go and sit in the car. We have to talk. I've got to get this thing straightened out. What am I, all of a sudden? Poison? Not even one kiss? Please, Glenn. You said you wanted to talk. All right, we'll talk first. Look, Nancy, I'm... I'm sick. I'm worried sick about you. About both of us. All those wonderful plans we made. Going to state college together, then after that, the other plan. Kids make plans. Dream stuff. You meant every word you said. I know I did. But the way you act and speak tonight, I've lost my compass. I, I don't know where we're heading. Look, I'm going to ask you once more. Is there anything wrong? Maybe. Nancy, please, what are you trying to say to me? I don't know, Glenn. I don't know for sure, and until I do, you must go back, please. I won't. Nancy, what I tell you? Go back before it's too late. Nancy! Nancy. Miss Branding, you must help me. Well, I thought I convinced you I am helping you. No, I don't mean those fancy phrases about mankind and the future of the human race. I mean help for me. You've got to set me free. Free to do what? Free to be myself. I just left Glenn, my boyfriend. You tried to stop him from seeing me. I didn't think that was important. It's the only important thing in my life. I love him. I know that. That's why I tried to prevent him from seeing you. Nancy, I can't risk having you upset. At this point of my experiment, our experiment, your emotional stability is of the utmost importance. In the scale of the future, it's bigger than anything. Certainly bigger than adolescent love between a couple of teenagers. What I feel for Glenn, you'll never understand. I'm asking you to set me free. Don't confuse me any longer with this talk of a big experiment. I know who you are, and I know what you've done to me. When I was in his arms, instead of feeling what I should, I almost killed him. You've got to help me. It's too late, Nancy. We, you and I together, we must go to the end of this experience. But it's horrible what, what I do, what I become. Power, especially the power to kill, is never pretty. It won't go on much longer. In time, you'll be proud of the part you've played in saving mankind. Here, drink this. It'll make you forget.
you'll do as I say. Remember what I want you to remember and draw a veil over the rest. No. Nancy, look at me. No. I said, look at me. I won't. If you won't let me go, I'll do it myself. You can't defy me. My will is stronger than yours. be. There is a power greater than science that rules the earth, and those who twist and pervert knowledge for evil only work out their own destruction. I'll call the police. <laughs> 